A new study reports the arts mean business in the Lehigh Valley. Stay tuned to PBS 39 as we focus on the arts. The region has seen a decline in attendance for nonprofit arts and cultural organizations. Find out what that means and what community leaders plan to do about it. Plus, a new public art project in Bethlehem combines form and function, and a Bethlehem-based author looks to the Lehigh Valley for inspiration. These stories and more coming up right now on Focus. Funding for Focus is provided by Univest Banking Insurance Investments and viewers like you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us for Focus. I'm Laura McHugh. A new report from Americans for the Arts reveals that the nonprofit arts and culture sector makes a $186 million impact in the Lehigh Valley. It also measured the impact of volunteers on our cultural organizations and found that in 2015, almost 7,000 volunteers donated more than 320,000 hours to the arts. Reporter Brittany Garzillo and I recently learned more about one team of volunteers and an artist who told us the Lehigh Valley is a great place to create. We're gonna make a left and go on the road that uh, the sisters in the Sisters of Blue Mountain Road have actually traveled to get onto the mountain road. In her latest novel, author and Bethlehem resident Karen Catcher revisits her hometown. It looks pretty much like it did. It didn't change all that much. The Sisters of Blue Mountain is set at the East Banger Dam, where I grew up. I built a fictional town around the dam called Mountain Springs. We would fish, mostly from that side, and then in the winter we'd ice skate. The novel's about two sisters who grew up on the dam in a bed and breakfast. They do have a family secret, and it's threatened to be exposed when a body turns up in their backyard. A wife and mother of two teenage girls, Karen never planned to become a novelist. Maybe it was always with me. I always told stories to myself. I just thought that was typical. Everybody did that. More than 10 years of diligence and four published books later, Karen calls herself a suspense novelist, writing crime fiction inspired by locations in and around the Lehigh Valley. I'm not as concerned with the whodunit. I'm fascinated by the why done it the motivations behind the actions. I think I always bring in the family structure to my novels. In Sisters, it is the relationship between the two sisters. I get my inspiration from my setting. Karen reflected on Sisters and her writing process along with two other authors at a recent event hosted by an organization called Society of the Arts. Luncheon with the Authors is an event that has been growing each and every year for the last five years. It provides these new and upcoming authors the opportunity to speak to a room of 200 men and women about their books and about their process and, and how important writing is to them. I'm buying this as a gift. Okay. Through this event and others, the Society of the Arts, also known as SOTA, raises thousands of dollars each year to support the Allentown Art Museum. In our 50 plus year history, SOTA has contributed uh, over $1.2 million to the art museum. There are always one or several prints from the SOTA print collection hanging on this wall. According to SOTA President Nancy Odorsky, the funds support educational programs and help purchase artwork to add to the museum's permanent collection. Almost 400 fine original prints have been purchased with the fund and they are part of the museum's permanent collection. They range from prints from the 1600s all the way up to prints of today. We're looking at something that's over 500 years old. Throughout the museum, members also donate their time. Volunteer docents alone provide 200 museum tours each year. Our organization puts in pretty much on average about 10,000 hours a year in support of the museum. SOTA members are enthusiastic about being with people. 
the artwork and the museum is really a jewel in the area. Bethlehem and Allentown really embrace the art, so for creative types, they're perfect cities to live in. Karen now looks forward to publishing her next novel. The title of my project is called River Bodies. It is set along the Delaware River in Portland, Pennsylvania. And as usual, she looks toward her surroundings for inspiration. For Focus, I'm Laura McHugh with Brittany Garzillo reporting. The Allentown Art Museum was one of 98 arts and cultural organizations in Lehigh, Northampton and Carbon Counties to participate in the latest Arts and Economic Prosperity Study, which concluded the arts mean business in the Lehigh Valley. Seventeen proved a record-breaking year for Bethlehem's 10-day summer arts event, Music Fest. It featured a record 419 performers and drew almost 1.2 million people, the largest crowd in its 33-year history, to produce an economic impact of $60 million. When you look at just food at Music Fest, we have 37 businesses on the north side alone providing food. So that's 37 small businesses. It isn't just one organization putting on a music festival. And that's what we like so much about this is we have some uh, organizations that can make 20% of their annual revenue right here at our programming. Cassie Hilgert leads the nonprofit organization ArtsQuest, responsible for Music Fest and hundreds of arts and cultural events, educational programs and festivals that combine to create an annual impact of $167 million and growing. I don't think by any means that we have some secret formula and we struggle like everybody else does. What we have learned though is the more you can connect with your community and reflect your community, I think you increase your chances for success. For the past 20 years, Lehigh Valley Arts Council has asked the question, whose business is the arts? Every five years, it studies the economic impact of the region's nonprofit arts and culture sector. After two decades of steady growth, the latest Arts and Economic Prosperity Report estimated the total at $186 million, a 10% decrease from five years earlier. I didn't expect them to drop, or at least to drop as much as they did, which raises concerns about, you know, a saturation point in terms of arts and entertainment here in the Valley. Also concerns about the viability and the future stability of the nonprofit arts sector. They cultivate a level of personal engagement in the community that is essential, I think, to the health and welfare of the, of the Lehigh Valley. The report estimates audience spending remained constant at more than $100 million, while audience attendance dropped from 5 million people in 2010 to 3.6 million people in 2015. It wasn't that people were not going to events, they just were not going to events at nonprofit arts and cultural organizations. There's more competition in the area with the Sands Performing Center, with the PPL, and on the horizon is talk of a 2400 seat uh, commercial concert venue in downtown Allentown. All of that is of concern. I don't see that as a bad thing. What that means is people have discovered, you excuse the term, uh, have discovered the arts as a business opportunity and are taking advantage of it. Is, are the arts what's helping bring these folks in? Well, so we asked those people yet another question, which was, why are you here? You're here on business, you're here visiting friends and family. 83% said, we came specifically for this arts event. So you can really see the pulling power of the arts. Though overall attendance numbers are down, audiences are spending more, according to the report. In addition to their tickets, the average Lehigh Valley resident spends an extra $19 when they go to an arts event. People coming into the Lehigh Valley spend $48 per person. Our region has the highest percentage of spending on recreation in, of, among all regions in the state. Visitors spend $2.1 billion here each year, and 27% of that is spent on recreation. 
arts and culture are part of that. So they're dining at our restaurants. If they're staying overnight, they're paying for a hotel. So we see uh, visitors who are important to the economy because of the amount of money, the incremental amount of money that they bring in. And it's a net import of dollars. It's dollars that are, would, would have been spent elsewhere that are now being spent here. The expansion in the last 20 years here in the Valley has been incredible. So how do you sustain it? To help answer that question, the Arts Council established a new business arts coalition and plans to continue asking that other question, whose business is the arts? I think it is everyone's business if we want the Valley to be competitive in the next 20 to 50 years from a workforce standpoint. If we don't support the investments of the arts, we're going to see a decline not just in attendance, but in the overall population of the Lehigh Valley over the next several decades. I say everyone's. It's everyone's business. We're all stakeholders in this community. From our children to our grandparents, Everyone takes a personal reward from their experiences in the arts. We all need to be involved in the arts. Uh, it, it's our quality of life, it's our culture, it's the way in which we communicate with each other, and it's the way we tell our stories. We wouldn't survive without telling those stories. Here to share some exciting news for the Allentown Art Museum of the Lehigh Valley is President and Chief Executive Officer David Mickenberg. David, thank you so Hi much there. for joining us. Thanks. So a big announcement was just released in October. Correct. Uh, so tell us about the future of the museum. I think that um, we've known for a long time that the museum needed to change, and that all cultural institutions need to change. Communities are asking for different things. Funding bases and funding structures have changed. So in order to be sustainable, in order to be relevant, in order to have greater impact on the community, and in order to be able to justify and benchmark that impact, there are new things that we were really excited about exploring with the community. So after 1,300 interviews, vision walls that, that co the Cultural Coalition did, after talking to more people and, and talking to the membership base of the museum, we have come up with a plan for the future that includes the creation of a community-based art center. Uh, that is open 24 hours a day. We have come up with a museum institute that's really a think tank on, on the role of the museum and the arts in the development of the urban core, in, in relationship to health care, in relationship to a whole bunch of issues that are based on, on social interaction and community health and development. Um, there is uh, a discussion, a very serious discussion, and a very serious plan for adding onto our facility uh, to create that community-based uh, uh, effort, but also to income to increase the income streams of the mu museum in a way that augments and expands our philanthropic capabilities as well. So banquet hall, um, but the most important one of all that really is um, the potential of building 47. Uh, artist live work lofts that uh, would be open to artists both internationally, nationally, and regionally, where in um uh, in response to gaining affordable housing, they are integrated into the community. They are working with the museum in partnership with the Allentown School District, in partnership with uh, other social service or organizations, so that we can um, inspire, transform, engage, and teach thousands within this community over the ne next few years. And that's just sort of the, the, the tip of the iceberg. Um, the museum is commissioning contemporary art and punching up our contemporary art program in a way that reflects the cultural diversity of our community. Um, and there um, is an announcement of a Yinka Shonabare sculpture, a chapel being built inside the museum for meditation by one of modernist great uh, sculptors, Stephen Antonakis. Um, here, there is expansion of, of a number of uh, um, uh, exhibition capabilities within the museum and partnerships with other museums uh, that is coming down the pike. It really is about integrating the museum with new technologically based, educationally significant endeavors that create synergies in the community that are based on the museum's interaction with the community and engagement with the community. So that raises a whole host of questions. Let's Go start right with ahead. the physical footprint. What could the museum look like in I order think to that, deliver those um, services? I think that the original building and the expansion to the building won't change a whole lot. Uh, although we are hoping to renovate parts of it and modernize parts of it um, and expand what we can show in terms of the permanent collection. But I think that um, either off-site or potentially, more potentially, 
on site uh, in the prop because we own the entire block from uh, from Penn Street to Fifth, from Linden to Court. Um, there could be, and we're hoping there will be, um, 47 affordable housing uh, live work lofts for artists who are here year round, and whether they're here for three month, six month, or year uh, stints as resident artists, um, that'll be part of the of the program. Uh, I think that um, there'll be on on site a, a community based art center that is about that is about engaging artists with the public on a 24 hour basis. We're even looking at uh, at vertical farming on the roof rooftop um, cafe, et cetera. I mean, I think this all is about expanding the programmatic initiatives in a way that the community can really benefit. At the same time, we're looking to use our, our property as a way of augmenting the income streams and, and, and expanding our earned revenue. And so part of that is a banquet hall for our own gala and cocktails and collecting and something else that we're going to announce in a couple of weeks, another community-based event, but at the same time available for rentals within the community because really there are no 400-seat locations uh, within Allentown. So anybody wants to have a wedding, anybody wants uh, to have a special event uh, for hundreds of people, you would have that, that site available to you. But also, the museum is short on storage space. Our collections have vastly expanded recently. As an example, the American Textile Museum um, was distributing its collections all over the United States. We received uh, about 200 works from the Textile Museum and all of the compact storage units, which takes our collection and expands its impact on the community. And I, there hasn't been a lot of discussion about this, but our textile collections after the Smithsonian are the second best in the United States. And so we're out of, with that addition to the collection and the addition of compact storage, we're out of storage space. The building of, of a professional secure, which is not just secure in terms of protection, but it's secure in, in terms of uh, environmental controls, it would be available not only to our collections, but to other collections throughout the valley and beyond. That's another income stream for the museum. So it is, in a sense, monetizing the building, but also making sure that it's used for, for increased educational programming. So you're talking about increased educational programming. How many people do you serve today, and how many people do you estimate you'll be serving once these in new the last, services are added? I think there's, there's a couple of ways of answering that question. The first is, in the last year, we've had about 14,000 school kids come to the museum, and they come from throughout the Lehigh Valley. Uh, one of the announcements that we're really proud of is the fact that Discover Art, which is the basis of, of our relationship with, um, uh, with the Allentown School District Foundation and is expanding into other school districts as well, is now partnered with a couple of things that are opening up in the summer and in the fall of 2018. Three of them, uh, to be exact. One is the Artline Project, which we're doing with the Allentown School District, creating 33 walking trails through Allentown, from school districts through Allentown to the museum. Each walking trail, 10,000 steps. That's what's determined to, that, uh, that everybody needs to do daily. The walking trails take you from the school, through public parks, through public uh, art, uh, public art uh, that is installed throughout the, the city, through significant architectural monuments to the Allentown Art, art Art Museum. Um, I think we're really excited about that. It premieres in September of 2018. The Urban Arts Partnership is a high school initiative that will premiere in 2018 as well and is working with both public and private schools uh, in, uh, in, in, in Allentown. Um, so there are a number of initiatives and the last one really uh, to make get it up to that three I mentioned <laughs> is the fact that we are opening a middle school summer arts camp which has been funded in part by the Trexler Trust, uh, specifically for middle school kids which don't have much uh, curricular activity in relationship to the arts, in Allentown, completely free, 100 students. So when you look at all of that, in addition to Discover Art, in addition to the tours that come in, in addition to the student exhibitions that we do, in addition to the continuing education that we offer to our teachers uh, throughout the Allentown School District, we're talking about really pushing up the number of students that we serve, but also the impact that we have. So how much is this gonna cost? I would rather not say. Um, <laughs> I think that everything we do is within the context of sustainability. We have gotten 
a lot of support from local foundations, from corporations, and from the membership base of the museum. And a lot of this is designed to ensure that we continue to receive that support by having even greater impact on the community than we've had in the past. So there's not a capital campaign associated with it? Or? I think you'll see announcements about uh, us discussing and presenting the idea of a capital campaign in the future. Thank you. We look forward to continuing to cover this. Thanks for discussing it. Our next story takes us to one of Bethlehem's newest public art installations. For more, here's Focus reporter Brittany Garzillo. Thanks, Laura. Spend a day in South Bethlehem and you may notice some new public art pieces placed throughout the city. Their function may surprise you. Architect Julian Pelikanakis and designer Austin McInnes weld and bend pieces of steel with purpose. To push yourself and try to do something new. The two draw inspiration from their environment. The first one is called Stacks, and it's an abstraction of the steel stacks. The second one is called Solar, and it's based on the Bethlehem Star. Spending months creating artwork that combines both form and function. So it doesn't look like a typical bike rack. These sculptures, made for cyclists, represent two of several new public art pieces strategically placed throughout South Bethlehem as part of a community arts initiative called the Artist Designed Bike Rack Project. The bike racks are functionally designed and artistically designed to meet both the art district needs and the needs of the biking community. We know that South Bethlehem has issues with congestion and traffic. And we are very concerned about walkability, pedestrian friendliness, and the ability for people to bike around the community. So to provide that functional opportunity for people to latch their bikes onto a rack is important to us. The project is a partnership between the City of Bethlehem and the nonprofit Arts Quest. Funded by a grant from Northampton County, commissioned artists received a $2,000 stipend per design. Because we have branded the south side of Bethlehem as the Arts District, this gave us the opportunity to commission artists for ideas and uh, create something more visually intriguing than, you know, a typical bike rack. Like this one, made from retired parking meters. We're hoping to replace people driving with people biking. And so it was kind of a play on, let's make parking meters obsolete if everybody bikes. Um, so what are we gonna do with the obsolete parking meters? Well, we'll turn them into bike racks. Installed at the corner of 4th and New Streets, the design was crafted by a group of students from Lehigh University, known as the South Mountain Makers. Bethlehem Parking Authority has donated the actual tops of the uh, old parking meters that they don't need anymore. They'll kind of look like they're like drooping over and falling over. It's really fun to be able to actually work with your hands and utilize the things that you learn to, to build something that's going to actually be there for people to see and enjoy for years to come. Led by Brian Slocum, the managing director of the Wilbur Powerhouse and Design Labs at Lehigh University, the team also carefully shaped this colorful ribbon design located at 4th and Broadway. When I had this little ribbon idea, we got some feedback and they said, We'd kind of like to see that, and I was like, I was doodling. Um, I've never actually like thought about how this would work. And check out their original bike rack bar, installed at the corner of Fourth and Vine Streets. We thought, hey, you know, there would wouldn't it be great to have an outside eating location? Made with the community in mind, the bar top features a detailed map of the South Side. You can park your bike and you know sit down and eat something, and so it was a little bit innovative in that approach. Perhaps this project put something bigger in motion. I think this is the beginning of a lot of public art projects and a lot of dialogue about how art can bring community together. For Focus, I'm Brittany Garzillo, reporting. Thank you, Brittany. The bike rack designs were selected by a jury of representatives from the City of Bethlehem, ArtsQuest, Southside Arts District, Bethlehem Fine Arts Commission, and the Coalition for Appropriate Transportation. You may find a complete list of all the artists and the bike rack locations at bananafactory.org. While throughout the year, PBS 39 celebrates the work of student artists. Here's our latest Artist of the Month. 
I'm Angelisa Serrard, and I'm PBS 39's Artist of the Month. I learned how to draw when I was two years old, but I have been focusing on drawing faces in the last year. Eyes are probably one of the most difficult things to draw, to like capture the emotion that's in them, but it's what I enjoy doing most. I like to draw because it allows me to channel my creativity and help me relax. Here's my drawing, and it's called Freckles. And it's special to me because her expression tells a story and shows a lot of emotion. I'm inspired by my mom because I grew up watching her draw and I always wanted to be like her. The best part of being an artist is that it lets me express who I really am and just lets me like let it all go. I'm Angelisa Serrard and I'm honored to be the PBS 39 Artist of the Month. Congratulations to Angelisa. Well, that wraps up this Focus on the Arts. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next week. This program is recorded at the PPL Public Media Center at PBS 39 in Bethlehem.